So we're here at the Health Data Palooza, and as you've documented, people are quantifying their health more often. I'm here in Susanna Fox, you work for Pew Internet Life Project, <laughs> for people who are tuning in here. And you've done some research in self-tracking. You found that 70% of Americans track something. Now, that could just be your pant size. Yeah. But now there's all these new devices that allow us to track things to you. People might have heard of Fitbit or uh, the Jawbone Up. Um, a lot of people think Apple's going to introduce some kind of device this fall that does it. So that might go mainstream in the same way that the smartphone went mainstream after the iPhone. So maybe we're on the cusp of something pretty big here with trackable, quantifiable self stuff that is in a wearable computer on you. But then there's this big question, is this data going to be accepted by clinicians, by your doctor or not? Um, should they be accepting that data? Is it is it something that should be part of the picture? I mean, is this something that should be part of insurance decisions? Like, what, what, what how should we be thinking about this? It's such a great question. I loved um, the presentation by Adriana Lucas, the Quantified Self London founder, because mm -hmm. she talked about um, how there really are, is a possibility of two roads and um, I loved she she said to me um, beforehand that you know who says that we should integrate all the data that quantified selfers are collecting mm. with the with the clinical record there's no you know maybe I don't want to share which is what our research found that two-thirds of people who track don't share their data with anyone mm -hmm. maybe they do want to keep it private um, and we need to be respectful of that um, so um, that is definitely one aspect. Um, you had another part to the question. Well, I, I think it, there's, it, it's getting into this uh, uh, sort of deeper question about uh, how, whether user-generated data should or could be used for clinical purposes by either the patient themselves, but if they upload it to a site like Patients Like Me, yeah. here's what my tracking experience is. In aggregate, if you had a given condition around Parkinson's or Alzheimer's or something else, and that data were shared by a caregiver, probably in those two cases. Um, could that be used in aggregate for clinical purposes or not? You know, this this actually reminds me of um, conversations that I used to have in the year 2000, 2001. Mm. Um, uh, my mentor, Tom Ferguson, who was an MD, who was an early advocate of um, self-care back in the 1970s. Um, and he talked about how um, in hospitals that, that he would visit, doctors would have a um, hand signal for patients who use the internet. This was from, you know, again, just the late 90s, the mm -hmm. very beginning. He said the hand signal was this, that, that, that it was, they brought in stacks of printouts from the internet. Mm -hmm. And there was such resistance to patients doing their own research. But then, of course, there's been a sea change in the attitudes that the doctors now understand that an educated patient <clears throat> comes into their office prepared for the clinical conversation in a different way. Yeah. Um, and and so now most people see it as a good thing. The, the American Medical Association in 2001 had a press release which warned people not to use the internet. Mm. They really switched gears. Mm -hmm. So actually, I haven't thought of this before, but but this conversation about you know should tracking data be of interest to clinicians. Of course it should be. Mm -hmm. Just just because there's been a failure of imagination for how it could be used doesn't mean it shouldn't be tried. Mm -hmm. So the uh, physicians I speak to still have some distrust of the internet and particularly of, of communities because people will share information that may not be clinically sound and they come armed with what they've heard there. Um, certainly the controversies around vaccinations in children and children have really, I think, highlighted some of the challenges there. Uh, but uh, are you seeing anything in the data around increased access to information changing those views? Or are we stuck in a place where people, because they can self-select what studies or what opinions they want to read, are going to be more set in perhaps misinformed views? This is this is a huge question, and, and I think the jury's still out about whether we're in a you know an echo chamber, mm. um, whether whether because you are are on the fence about vaccines, and then you get drawn into an anti-vaccine group, mm -hmm. and you know, but honestly, that can happen offline as well. It's just that the internet can um, speed up the velocity of the conversation mm. um, and so it could spin 
towards misinformation and disinformation, mm -hmm. or it could spin towards better information. And there's examples of both. So um, there's been some great studies which show that um, you know, in a breast cancer forum, they did a study um, which looked at thousands and thousands of messages and only found about a dozen that contained misinformation almost all of which had been eventually corrected within hours mm. by the community. Mm. And so the challenge is finding a community that is full of the um, experts who stick around with something that is um, a chronic, complicated condition, a life-changing diagnosis, then you're more likely to be able to find that kind of community. What's really tough is an acute situation of you know, a single surgery, like knee replacement, um, that you know, you if you do okay, then you're not part of the community anymore. Mm. Um, and so that I think is a significant information challenge for peer-to-peer -peer healthcare. Do you see um, an ethical imperative for the new information brokers, just to say, Google with their search engine, you know, turning up data that maybe pulled into the engine? They they often will put, say, if you search aspirin right now on Google, you'll see information from NIH on the right-hand bar. Yeah. Uh, Facebook is going to debut search sometime in the next five years. <laughs> They're going to have similar choices to make about what they show and what they don't. Um, should there be ethical pressure from society, from regulators, to push them to show stuff that is verified or huh. not? Because we know that people are going to turn to these places right. first. And if they're searching to Google now for a certain condition, a certain uh, uh, symptom, and they want to find people like that, well, the next stage is social search in Facebook, where they want to find existing conversations around these communities. But that's, that's coming down the pike. Yeah, I don't know about regulation, yeah. but I would certainly see it as market differentiation, that, that if you can show that your service is the one that returns the best results, the most useful results, mm -hmm. and if you can stay tuned in to the market opportunities that, that are presented with consumers who are thirsty mm. for this kind of data and for this kind of information and this kind of narrative often where people want to, they want storytelling. Mm -hmm. they, they, um, there are so many people in, in my field work who say, I wish that I could connect with someone just ahead of me on the path um, and just hear how the surgery went for them. or hear how, you know, they got through, you know, teething, <laughs> you know, even if it's something common or something rare. And, you know, if, if there's a, a company that can prove that they can return the best social results, I think that is a heck of a market opportunity. So uh, you've been involved in setting up, I think, at least one uh, community for people who are interested in being e-patients online. Where can people go to find that? So e-patients.net is the blog for the Society for Participatory Medicine. Okay. Uh, it was started by Tom Ferguson, who is an MD, who um, launched it, and then um, he was uh, living with multiple myeloma and unfortunately mm. passed away just after putting up one or two blog posts. Mm. But we continue to blog in, basically in conversation with his memory. Right. Well, I hope people will check that out and check your work out at uh, Pew Internet and Life Project on health data and associated issues. Thank you, Susanna. Thanks.